Morgan, plus Treat Williams and Joe Piscopo on Good Evening America. Just ahead on Good Company, field host Gary Lumpkin visits the hunting show at the St. Paul Civic Center. That's next, so stay tuned for Good Company. The Pope has arrived in America. Now from Miami, he begins his journey across our land. God bless America. What will make this visit different from his last? Peter Jennings and Bill Blakemore report the Pope's agenda for America tonight. Just ahead on Good Company, new help for thinning hair. Also a warning about some dangerous toys on the market. And take a look at the hunting show that just opened. That's just ahead. How did Lee Marvin's hell raising cost him his life? Inquiring minds want to know. I want to know. What's behind the vicious battle for Liberace's $100 million fortune? This week's Inquirer tells you. How can you gain a half hour a day? How should a woman make the first approach? In the Inquirer. A sneak preview. What will you see on Dolly's new TV show? Find out in the Inquirer. Over 100 features for people with inquiring minds. Like me. You know, sometimes even the best electronic doodads can go on the blink. blink, blink. So, whenever I have a little glitch, I rely on the experts at Best Buy Service Center. Like this guy. He knows sophisticated electronics. Hey, am I on a roll or what? Best Buy has specialists for everything from audio to video. So I'm not being worked over by someone who usually fixes to to toasters. Ah, that's better, thank you. Yes, it's Best Buy to the rescue again. They can fix it. Out of more than 4,000 physicians in the Twin Cities, how do you pick just one? Call 874-4444 for MedFormation. The season's best new shows on the next Oprah Winfrey Show. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Good Company. It's Thursday, it's Makeover Day, and we're going to be do doing something a little bit different today because uh, it was about five months ago that we got a letter from a woman who had almost no hair for 20 years, and she asked for a makeover. We were able to introduce her to someone who gave her hair weaving. She had a full head of hair five months ago from this hair weaving process. This is how it was done. We're going to check in today and see how Debbie Buchanan has fared after five months with her hair weaving. Attorney General Skip Humphrey is here with some advice on how you can avoid unsafe toys for kids. And we're going to take a look at some new options in adoption, including the situation where the birth parents actually meet the adoptive parents before the adoption. Also, we're going to do a little cooking today. We have microwave snacks for kids, quick, tasty, and easy. Long ago, a tornado devastated two families here in Goodhue County. My story today is about how, within hours, hundreds of neighbors gathered to help out. And we'll tell you about how valuable neighbors can be in a tragedy like this. And I am on the scene at the Northwest Hunting Show in downtown Minneapolis at the St. Paul Civic Center. We'll be back a little bit later to show you what's going on with this, uh, this show. It's a lot of good stuff. Sounds good, Gary. Oh, that's kind of just ahead on Good Company. From the Twin Cities, it's Good Company. With your hosts, Steve Edelman and Sharon Anderson. With field host, Gary Lumpkin. And bargain hunter, Vicki Odette. And now... Your hosts, the husband and wife team, Steve and Sharon. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Ooh. All right. Did you what hear, a group. Did you hear the weather group. report this morning? It's going to get no. cold this weekend. I think it really seems... In the 50s seem, during the day? It does really seem like the uh, summer is over. All of a sudden, like in the last week... It, suddenly changed. I'm glad we got out there and camped last weekend. That's true. We went camping over the 4th of, Ju and well. 4th of July. <laughs> what was it? Labor Day. Labor That's Day. You're was. terrible at holidays. You can never remember which holiday I know. It's weird. But that was fun. Did you really like it? I mean, did you like sleeping in the tent? I did. I loved that part. Really? Yeah. See, mm -hmm. we, we borrowed this Winnebago mm -hmm. and drove the Winnebago and then parked it next to the tent and slept in the tent. <laughs> yeah. So we had our options Great. covered. If it rained, we were going to go in. Yeah, you have your very own nice. bathroom and running water that way and then yeah. you get the romance of sleeping in the tent. I thought it was great. It was nice. Yeah, we enjoyed that. What was and the we, high point for you? The high point was uh, at night, uh, you know, as it was time to eat dinner, we um, got in our uh, Winnebago and we drove to one of the nicest restaurants <laughs> in Red Rock, <laughs> which uh, was terrific. You know, the food was as good as it was expected. The, the, actually, this is true. There's a Seriously, place called the... Uh, a restaurant. There's a place. It's in Pepin, Wisconsin. You know, like Pepin. You might mm -hmm. be familiar with it. There's a lot of huge sailboats that sail there. 
And I just wanted to give you a quick tip. There's a place called the Harbor View Restaurant in Pepin, Wisconsin. It is incredible. I mean, it is wonderful. It really is good. And we had Casual that, and terrific we, food. We got out of our tents, got into <laughs> our car, and went to that restaurant, and it was wonderful. But we did make breakfast. That's right. Bacon campfire. and eggs on the campfire were great. It was fun. All right. Anyway, the, uh, camp, the, the hunting show, not the camping show, the hunting show is at the St. Paul Civic Center. just opened last night, and Gary is out there to just give us a preview of some of the highlights. What did you find out there, Gary? Well, we found, we found a lot of things, but I got to go back to what you were just talking about. Yeah. Uh, uh, you guys really know how to rough it, I got to tell you. Isn't that's that the true. Truth? Yeah. Well, yeah. you know why we camped where we did? We went to Frontenac State Park in, in Minnesota because they said it was near the restaurant. No kidding. Seriously, that's why we went. Steve we really wanted to go to that restaurant. And well, we it, said, what's, where could we camp that's close to the restaurant? Yeah. Well, I, it makes, that makes perfect sense. And I thought it was really daring to get out of the Winnebago and actually sleep in the tent. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, <laughs> if you, get a, merit, you get a merit badge for bravery just for doing that. We're, we're pioneers, yeah. urban pioneers. Yeah. <laughs> But we are, you're right, that we're at the St. Paul Civic Center, and it was the hunting show, the Northwest Hunting Show, as you mentioned, uh, open last night. It'll be running through this weekend. Now, as we're taping our show uh, today, uh, it's not open yet, but we're going to get down on the floor a little bit later and show you some of the things that we have found here last night and again today. Uh, it'll be kind of neat because there won't be um, a big crowd because this is one of the more popular shows held every year in the, in the Twin Cities. So we're going to come back a little bit later and show you some things with some fashions. But kind of to give you an idea about that, was it... Um, uh, you, you were talking earlier, too, uh, about uh, Sharon, about the, oh, the fall is coming, a little colder and stuff. Yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't too chilly when you were camping? No. No, it was a no, beautiful fine. night. It was quite warm. But if it had been, yeah. you might have wanted one of these. What is it? This is called the heart hat. Now, let me tell you about this thing. I'm going to get it out of the bag here just a little bit. What this does, I mean, you know, you're out, uh, uh, you don't have to be hunting necessarily, but you're, you're even walking, you know, the wind chill factor and freeze your nose off. That's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, mm -hmm. that's coming. That's kind of stuff. Okay. You can have this little baby in this, th in this attractive hunter orange. Good grief. You look like a ghostbuster. And then, and then see, you can, you can do that. <laughs> that's kind of a, kind of a nice feature, I think. But there's more. Oh yeah. Because you, now you got to think that if this was really cold and you had to flap down, had to flap down like this, yeah. and you had it all tucked in your uh, parka and stuff, yeah. uh -huh. and your muffler around you, yeah. uh, you'd smother maybe. I mean, you could do this, but then you, you'd have the cold wind, right? Yeah. Well, Aha. you got to breathe, right? Somehow or other. Looks like Spider-Man. You're kidding. Oh. There is a tube that fits. Anyway, you got to, I'm lost. This is I lost taking winter too seriously, I think. <laughs> I think okay. so. I hope got, it's not that bad this winter. You've got this tube that, yeah. it, that it fits under here, fits right under your mouth. And it kind of trails out somewhere, and you can get fresh air, and it, uh, it doesn't expose your face, so you can breathe. We can't hear you, Gary, because your mic's not there. Oh, excuse oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking into the tube. You couldn't hear that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you were breathing just great, right? when you talk like this. Here, no. But, you have to, but anyway, you have, this, <laughs> you, have this, uh, you have this tube, and you tuck it in, and it kind of trail it out behind you a little bit, uh -huh. and it, it lets the air, the, the uh, fresh air gets in. And by the time it comes through the tube and stuff, it's warm enough so it's not, you're not breathing that icy cold air. And, uh -huh. uh, and, uh, and it comes in other colors, by the way. If you're not a Hunter Orange fan, they've got light uh, pastels, if you like. Oh, that. it's probably oh. more attractive in other colors, really? right? Yeah. Yeah. The designer colors. Well, I don't know. This, uh, you could, <laughs> they could use this for Halloween, too, I suppose. I suppose so. Well, anyway, hey, we have some other uh, uh, fashions, uh, legitimate and, uh, well, this is legitimate, but even more uh, hunting fashions and other fun right. things to show you <laughs> and tell you more about the show a little later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> The show's right. bigger and better than ever, I understand. So Gary will show yeah. us That's tomorrow. That's now through Sunday, by the way. Is it? Yeah. Debbie Buchanan wrote us a letter last, Oct or last uh, April and said that she had had a problem all of her life with hair that was very, very thin. Her hair was so thin that people would actually stop her on the street and ask her if she'd been sick because she had very, very little hair. Well, she asked if she could have a makeover. Is there something we could do to change her look? So we sent her to Kit Rogers at Capello Salon in downtown Minneapolis because he does a process where he adds hair. It's called hair weaving. Well, this was five months ago, and we want to check in with Debbie today and see how this process has held up, if she's actually kept the hair on. But before we meet Debbie and see how she's done over these five months, let's take a look right now back to last April when we first met Debbie. Well, Kit suggested a process he calls hair weaving. He says it would give her a full head of hair without some of the inconveniences she might have with a conventional wig. He says hair weaving is basically taking a number of narrow hair pieces and weaving them into Debbie's own hair. Basically, this is what he does. He takes these strands of her natural hair and ties them together. This forms a base on which the hair pieces will be attached. His main tools are needle and thread. As you can see, he actually sews the hair piece right onto that base he created with her real hair. 
He says there are a lot of pieces to sew on, so the process will take about six hours or more. To give you an idea, once again, of the severity of Debbie's problem, let's take a closer look at what she looked like before the procedure was done. You can see in this profile just how little hair she actually has and how much of her scalp shows through. Now let's take a look at what Debbie Buchanan looks like following Kit's hair weaving process. That's Can great. you believe it? It was as if she was a different person oh, when she, she had loves that process done. She really done. loves it. She does love it. And yeah. you'd think maybe she wouldn't have been able to keep it up in five months. Let's take a look. Please welcome Debbie Buchanan and Kit Rogers. You look terrific. Yeah. Thank you. How do you like I it? Do. Oh, I love it. So you've had it like this for how long? Since March the 27th. And you've never taken this hair that was woven on there was never taken off? No, it's not. It's on for good. You mean the actual hair that Kit wove on there? Last mm -hmm. March, yes. is, is the it's actual the hair, hair that's still yes. there? It's the same hair. Well, now, what do you do to keep it up? Is it difficult? No, Kit does it. <laughs> <laughs> he does it. He adds more right. hair or what? No. Uh, it's tightened as my hair, my hair grows that it's attached to. Uh, her hair has grown probably, I'd say, at least a good three inches, mm -hmm. and it's gotten uh. very long. So as the tightening process goes, we just roll up the excess, and then we sew it. We take it off piece by piece and um, you know, reattach the hair. Uh -huh. And the hair has held up really well. Debbie has been camping. She's been canoeing. She spent the entire sum summer having a great time. She was kind of concerned because she had it done in the spring and she had all these camping plans uh -huh. uh, for the summer and it held up really well. Oh, I was yeah. really happy with her. What do you have to do to maintain your hair that other people wouldn't have to? Um, well, I had to learn you know, how to do hair. You know, I never had to do hair before. That's right. You said you yeah. didn't have. You really I didn't have, have much hair. I didn't have any hair for, for like 20, 20 years. Twenty years. It started in high school, and it only took a few minutes to dry. Did you? Did you, excuse me, did you put on a wig before you did this kind of thing? Did you ever use that? No, I never wore a wig. What, why not? Just, it was just normal for me. You know, not to have any hair. I grew up with it, and I just always, uh, I didn't feel comfortable in a wig. Yeah. And that wasn't me. So you know, I got stares. Uh, lots of stairs. Yeah. And after I had the hair put on, I went from this show to the Skyway system, and I went to see my husband. And no one looked at me any different that day than anyone else in the Skyway system, where before, you know, people would stop and stare, actually stop, you know, and like take a double turn and, and look at me. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, it was that way just about everywhere I went. So let's talk a little about your comment about you feel that this is your hair versus mm -hmm. a wig wouldn't be your hair. Tell us a little bit more about okay. that. Okay, it, it's become a part of me. And like, a, I don't know, a wig is just, you know, you put it on, it's more or less like you're hiding. Mm -hmm. That's why I, that's the way I felt. Mm -hmm. And this is, it's attached to me, to my hair. Uh, it's just very normal to wash it and dry it. It did take, you know, two hair dryers to dry it to make it faster <laughs> and uh, to learn how to you know, to roll it. And where a wig, you don't do that. You mm -hmm. wash it in the sink and you shake it out and, oh. and you know, you so put it on. Part right, part a separate you. part. A little, the yeah, attachment part, yes, makes it a part, part of it. me, right. So you're able to shower and yes, wash I it and roll that and, yourself? Yes, uh-huh. And, you know, condition it and comb it out. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it takes, a, you know, it takes a lot longer to do than it used to. You know, I had to learn to do all oh, that. Yes. Are there some surprises, Kit, for people who come in and want hair weaving? Uh, part of it is, is that a lot of people think that there's a certain amount of magic about you don't have hair and then all of a sudden the next day you do mm -hmm. and a lot of people are under the misconception that you have it put in it's styled and that's it's always going to look like that it's not like a wig at all it's just like your hair you have like to maintain it you have to maintain mm -hmm. it you have to learn how to use different curling appliances and uh styling uh lotions and gels and just like you would if you if you had hair you have to learn how to uh, to take care of it and learn about your own hair mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a good process for people that want to learn and have the patience Right. Um, but if you don't have any patience, I don't know if it's actually for you. Huh? Yeah, I and your hair, of course, is, is not. No. <laughs> your hair is. Actual <laughs> You've had that since you were a child. Beautiful yes, since I was a child. Yeah. Well, we should mention that, your that hair. there. Yes, it is actually your hair. Absolutely, his hair for sure. That's the reason Debbie and I became uh, became partners is because I don't know what it's like to have a weave, and I don't know what the problems are like. Even though I have long hair, I know how to maintain long hair. But Debbie uh, had to learn. So every step that she was learning, I was learning as well. Yeah. 
So it taught me a lot. Yeah, well, if you want to know more about this process, Kit is a good person to talk to. There are some other salons in the Twin Cities that do do hair weaving, mm -hmm. and we'll uh, have those names with City Line if you'd like to call that number. We're out of time, but I just want to know, do you feel it's changed your personality at all having hair? Um, it really didn't change me. I mean, yeah. I, I was outgoing before, you know, and I talked to people. And, but to, I want everyone to know about this process, that, you know, so, uh, someone can be helped through this. And I talk about it to everyone. I'll bet you do. You. <laughs> you know, exciting. I tell anyone about it. Great. Well, thanks for sharing it with us. Mm -hmm. okay, thank, okay. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good Tip luck Rogers Capello. Good thank you. Hi there, glad you're here. This is the eye work, and this is their promise. Glass is fast, glass is bright. Let me show you. First, an exam by a doctor of optometry. Then you pick out frames from thousands. Now here's why they're really fast. They make your glasses in their own lab. <laughs> they can do it in an hour. The price is right. The eye works. Glass is fast, glass is right. Call for an exam or bring in your prescription. Unexpected quality, spectacular savings in Wick's Fall Trend Sale. A store full of breathtaking values featuring this dramatically styled, meticulously detailed three-piece sectional. Now only $9.99.98, a savings of $600. And in your bedroom, the simple elegance of white laminated furniture, starting at only $79.98 each piece. And no payments or finance charges for 90 days with a Wix charge. Wix, surprisingly Wix. In this week's Star Magazine, it's Jim and Tammy Baker's Private World. I saw their wild spending, Tammy's tantrums, and Jim's secret drinking. Also in Star, Lisa Marie Presley's moved out, telling her stingy mom, don't be cruel. Blonde bombshell Mamie Van Doren bears all in a Star Book Extra. I'll tell you about my nights with Johnny Carson and Warren Beatty, and my hot affair with Steve McQueen. Plus, how Lee Marvin found happiness with his childhood sweetheart. Get it all in this week's Star Magazine. Oh, oh. There's good things in the middle of old cereal. Oh. Oh. Oh, what it tastes. Oh. There's good things in the middle of old cereal. Oh. Oh. Oh, what it tastes. Oh. Oh, those O's of Quaker Oats and corn. Filled with honey, graham, and other good things. Taste that cinnamon. There's good things in the middle of old cereal. Honey graham or crunchy nut from Quaker. Oh. Oh, oh what it tastes. General Skip Humphrey is here with some news about toys you might want to be aware of. Some of, some of them have been recalled. But we want to remind you that we do have a studio audience. We're back in the studio now after the State Fair. And uh, if you come down and be in our studio audience, you can participate in the show and also qualify for this. It's a nice trip to Disneyland, round trip airfare for two, seven nights accommodations, passes to Disneyland, all courtesy of Hobbit Travel. Now that drawing is coming up next Wednesday. So if you're in our audience from now until next Wednesday, through next Wednesday, uh, you will qualify for that. Give us a call at 645-3999 and tell us what day you'd like to be here. We will arrange it. The tickets are free. Just come in. Our tapings next week will be around noon, a little bit after noon. So call that number and they'll tell you more specifics about it. Steve? We're going to find out about toy safety now. For example, take a look at this thing. Um, if you looked at that, I, I don't know, could you figure out what's wrong with this toy? Why this would be unsafe? I'm not exactly sure, but we're going to find out because this toy was recalled today. And we have with us the man who can really give us some insight into what to look for when it comes to dangerous toys. He's our Attorney General, Skip Humphrey. Welcome. Thank you. Thank what you very much. Is, what is wrong with this guy? And he was recalled today? Well, yes, today. You know, it, it looks awfully cute and everything, and it uh, hangs there over a crib or whatever. Mm -hmm. But what happens when it comes apart, as it did just before we were talking here, and this cord becomes ah. wrapped around an arm? a neck uh, and that's a leg. why they recalled it and that is the basic reason for the recall okay. that's that's one of the important things that parents have to look at uh, loose cords other kinds of things like that well now when something like this is recalled I, I suppose it'll show up on the news and then yes. people will still have it anyway what, you know what good does that do I guess they can't sell it anymore well number one they should be very careful if they have bought it mm -hmm. uh, obviously they all have the opportunity for the recall to bring it back right uh, secondly uh, obviously, they should be very careful. Just the, the general principle of watching out for loose cords, those kinds of concerns, those are, those are matters. There's another here that 
I Let's think shows it more here. dramatically. Same idea? Same, same basic problem. This, this product was recalled some years ago. There was actually a death of a child by strangulation by, with this product. So watch out for these cords. These, this is the problem. It, it, they look so innocent. They look cute. Uh, but the facts are that uh, young children, and infants in particular, mm -hmm. uh, get entrapped with them. How about these? Now, you brought this rabbit. Well, this is one talking about maintenance. Uh, the rabbit itself is cute, uh, but, uh, and certainly is probably not a danger at any point, except when you have a problem of, of the dog having chewed the ends of the, of the ears here, and underneath you have a very sharp uh, uh, projectile mm -hmm. here, which uh, can either be caught in a mouth or in uh, an eye or whatever. These are the problems you have to, with... Um, so you, you're, you're suggesting we have to check out these toys? Well, parents uh, there wear. would have to watch for wearing, and certainly if it's a used product and you're buying it at a, a garage sale or something else, make sure that you know what okay. the maintenance has been. And, and obviously with any uh, toy, uh, you have to watch uh, what, what the wear on that toy is. How about this rattle here? Now this, well, this one, you what's know... What's the problem with this? Doesn't that look... I mean, that's, you've seen those plenty of times. Sure. There's nothing wrong with this until it breaks or until the child is smart to pull it off. Look what's under there. Ooh. Is that? Now that that is sounds, seems like it dangerous. shouldn't be manufactured. Is that, that available is or that's an old? This is an older toy, but again, uh, uh, if you're buying used or if someone is giving you a hand-me-down, it may look just like a very innocent little toy, but underneath, you've got a major, major serious danger. Okay. Uh, so those are the kind of concerns. And I would just say that the other... Uh, products that we have here. So also this, I mean, how many of you have seen this in a bathtub? Of course. Sure. And there's little beads in there. Mm -hmm. But if this happens to come loose, it's broken, those beads uh, become open, uh, a child can choke on those. So what are you suggesting that we should check to see, because there's beads in practically everything. I right. mean, should we check to see? You have to see whether or not it's, it's safe. Again, here, the maintenance of the, of, the, uh, of the product and of the toy. Okay. And finally, I think uh, many people are aware of this kind of a problem. Here uh, we have the, the lawn dart. Um, the, are those still sold? These are sold now as sports equipment. They are not allowed to be sold as a toy. The key thing here is that this may be an enjoyable sport for someone who is 15, 16, yeah. uh, and on up. But if it's left out and it gets in the hands of some child that is younger, um, then you've got a problem. You have to look at what the use of various toys are. Some toys are, are for older children, mm -hmm. but if they're not maintained or if they're kept in places where other younger children can get at, they can become very dangerous. Well, you know, this thing, even for older kids, I mean, of I know course. a story, uh, Rocco Altabelli, the, you know, has all the salons all over the Twin Cities. One of his sons was, was playing with this, came down right in his eye. Yeah. And it, that was it. He lost his eye horrible yeah. and he was older a terrible well, that, thing it's it's uh, obviously uh, dangerous in that respect and that that brings us to the point of mm -hmm. there is this is uh, uh, national child safety week mm -hmm. and we have to emphasize that there are thousands of child of toy related uh, injuries that occur every year uh, over 90,000 uh, children are brought to emergency uh, rooms and hospitals every year for child re uh, related injuries i guess there would be 3 items that I would be uh, uh, interested in having your viewers uh, remember. First of all, inspect the toy. Take a look at its condition and inspect it not from the perspective of how you would think it should be used, but remember it's a child that's going to use that toy and you have to think of it through uh, that perspective of what that child is going to use it for and as we all know, uh, children don't always use them for what they're intended. Right. Secondly, look for these unsafe conditions. Uh, if there's a uh, pointed objects on there, if there are loose uh, cords, uh, any of those kinds of things, that, that is a, uh, a danger signal, mm -hmm. uh, I would think. And, and finally, um, just remember that all those toys are not, they're not made for all ages. If it's a chemistry set, it may be just fine for an older child, but it may not be very good for a very young child. We also want to mention, if you'd like more information about that, or there's a specific toy that you're not sure about, there's a number you can call, that's an 800 number. The the uh, Federal uh, Commission or Product Safety Commission, Consumer Product Safety Commission, 1-800-638-2772. Thank you very much for coming on our show with them. Thank you. Good Thank you.
footwear, fashion, funny. And Felicia, the fashionable financial analyst. Look, Felicia's got more great new shoes. How does she do it? You always have such great buys on brand name fashion dress shoes. And now we'll give you a $20 leather purse free with any two pair of women's shoes you buy. With brand name choices like these and a free handbag too, what other shoe store does a person need? I always go first class for less when I go to famous footwear. That's how she does it. I don't look for trouble. I don't wear rubber watches. And I don't say I do when I don't. So I don't do this for fast food places that don't do steak. New steak fajitas. Real steak, real fast. But I do appreciate a mask. No, I don't. Taco Bell. The only real choice. To celebrate Pepsi's victory over Coke Classic, we're holding the ultimate choice sweepstakes. What does it mean? It means we'll lift you away on a private jet for 10 days of frolic and fantasy. It means you can win a great 10-day trip. Visit a trio of playgrounds preferred by the posh and pampered. You can visit three American cities. Share your good fortune with five grateful companions. It means you can bring five friends. So shampoo. It means good luck. Shampoo. What's your excuse for not losing weight? Nothing seems to work for me. That's because no other weight loss program ever offered such a combination of easy to live with ideas. If you want to lose up to eight pounds in the first two weeks, get started with Weight Watchers Quick Start Plus right now. Maybe I'll start my diet next week. Why wait? This is your very last chance to join Weight Watchers for only $7. You've just run out of excuses. So call Weight Watchers today. It is cooking time, friends, and we are going to make microwave snacks that are quick and easy and delicious for kids. Delicious. Let us be the judge of that. Huh? What have you got? I've got what's basically chicken nuggets, right? Just like you can get in the stores. But here's how you make these babies. What you do is you start out with a half stick of butter, all right? You take your butter and you melt it, as we have here. Huh? And you just uh, then add to that. Sharon, why don't you break an egg in there? Okay. And then we are going to add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. This is going to give us our little wash kind of deal. So we will wash over. Why don't you just kind of mix that up? This is your egg wash here? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Just mix that up. We have a little salt and a little pepper. Then, a little more pepper. There, mm -hmm. we go. there you go. The next thing we do is, she could have used this, but didn't. I didn't see that there. That, there's no reason to. No. And you can do it by hand. Now, the next thing we're going to do is... to wash that whole thing. It's <laughs> easier to wash it for. Whoops. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take corn flakes and we're going to basically we're going to coat the the, uh, the chicken we're going to take chicken cubes and, and uh, put them in the corn flakes. Now, don't you get bored with kind of breaking up these corn flakes? Oh yeah, isn't it's that one of the hardest things in life. I mean, it's really you know, grueling, the thing, isn't the it? The thing about corn flakes now, you know, Drags what we do, down. What we do around our house is we just find whatever there is available uh, uh, is kind of a fun utensil, yeah. and then we break up our corn flakes with that. <laughs> Um, you brought that from home this morning, huh? Yeah, this is what we had lying around our house, yeah. which uh, you, could, you could use, uh, but actually maybe that's overkill. What you, what you can do is, you can get, did you know this? There are, <laughs> hey, we're really doing this. You can get um, pre-crumbed crumbs. I didn't know that. So I you didn't get corn flake crumbs? Real crumbs come just like this. That is a little lazy. You don't have to fool it. <laughs> so why, yeah, great. But I like it. Lazy, <laughs> I like it. Lazy is perfect. <laughs> You see, they come out very crummy. Perfect crumbs. You, just they don't, you don't have your awkward size crumbs. You that's know? right. Oh, big ones, little ones. Here, they're perfect, consistent. These are as crummy as they get. You just take Wait, it, you take cubes. Don't you wash it in that first? No, you don't. No, see? Ha ha, you thought you did that. No, what you do is you put it in the crumbs first. Uh huh. This is right according to the recipe. And then you put it in the wash. Mm hmm. And uh, put it on the spin cycle. Mm -hmm. No, you put it in the wash. <laughs> then you Gentle. crumb it up some more. See? Oh. So it gets a double dose. Of crumbs. Very crummy. And then, let's see something in the way that, then after that, you simply uh, put it in, you, you do this for, you know, put one and a half inch cubes. And then you just pop it in your microwave deal with some wax paper over it. How long? And uh, you put it in for eight minutes and you pop it out. And I imagine you have a whole dish full if you're going to do it for eight minutes, huh? Oh, yeah. You yeah. do it with a, base, a pound of chicken, okay. one and a half ounce. And then they come out looking like basically the chicken. They nuggets. don't look much different than when you put them in. Huh? A little bit darker, I guess. Well, but the chicken was raw, or? you know. Well, they're not, they're not really crisp. Let's take a bite and see what you think. I, they need a little uh, barbecue sauce, yeah, usually. You want to cover up the taste? Yeah, you got to <laughs> muffle it somehow. I mean, you know, you've got to do something with these things. 
Give it they're a They're very kid. chewy. Yeah. They're kind of tasty. Kind of tasty, real mm -hmm. chewy. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. They're pretty good. Hey, try this one. This one's better. No? <laughs> <laughs> I think... I'll one trust of, you. One of the things is use a big one. Because I, I made little ones at home mm -hmm. for starters. Eight minutes in the microwave with one of these little guys, it comes out like a billiard ball. I mean, <laughs> a tiny, tiny billiard ball. Hard as a rock. So test them to make sure they don't go too far. Eight minutes in the microwave, four minutes, and you just flip them over and pour more. Okay? Here's a really quick tip that you can do. If you want to get these little individual packets of nacho chips, or mm -hmm. just regular little corn chips, actually, you don't need to get the nacho cheese because it's going to add cheese. Just regular old taco chips. And then cut uh, a hole in the top. Not a hole, but actually a slit all the way down the top of one side. Mm -hmm. Then you're just going to put this whole package right in the microwave. You're going to put in, in each one of the packs, put in a quarter cup of grated um, cheddar cheese. Right in the package. Right in the package. Two tablespoons of taco sauce, or if your family loves taco sauce more. This is if you care enough to do the very best. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Slop that stuff on there. <laughs> okay, right. this is the one that kids can do themselves. Go make yourself some taco. I'm watching right. General Hospital. Okay. Then you uh, put time cook. All right, and you put these on for oh one to two minutes until they melt down. Mm -hmm. Melt down. They yeah, melt down, down, right. And Jane yeah. Fonda shows up. And then you just take it right out. You can use your old package. You can put your uh, tomatoes, your lettuce, your sour cream, whatever on the top, and you can just eat them like that right well, out that's of the package. That's kind of nice. Quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or easy. if you're a purist, put them on a plate, you know, or if you're entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you have people over. Just hand them the package and say, you know, good luck. You're on your own. Welcome to my house. Did you think you're at a restaurant, you know? <laughs> did you bring your own knife and fork? You didn't? Well, get out of here, you know? Anyway. Seriously, these are bad. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> to no. my house again. These are good. They're exactly what you'd expect. You know, the melted cheese. They taste cheese just like you thought they would. It's as good as the mm -hmm. ingredients you put in them. Well, here's one that I think is more fun and even quite well, healthy for children. And I think children would enjoy doing this. What's this that? is also very quick. This is a way to make snack bananas, banana mm -hmm. pops with chocolate on the outside. You just take bananas and peel that banana, Steve. I will. Okay. Okay. Steve peels banana. Okay. Oh, Here we go. Really fascinating. Oh, Steve, how could you mess that up? Well, I didn't. It was a weak banana. This is a... Check out your bananas. Skip Humphrey was telling us about toys. I'm telling bananas. Now, when you got to the store, you know, test those little babies like this because they could, you know, be dangerous. Yeah, and that, and that one, let's hope this end is all right. You think this end is? I don't know. Okay. I'm hoping. What you're going to do is cut this banana. You're going to have a nice whole banana, and you're going to cut it in half this yeah. way. And you're going to use both ends. You're going to put a uh, stick in there. Okay. Okay. Carefully insert stick. Carefully. Okay. Then put that in the freezer for one half hour. It's going to mm -hmm. freeze up. And while you're doing that, while you're freezing it, you're going to take one small package, a six-ounce package of uh, semi-sweet chocolates, mm -hmm. and also three tablespoons of salad oil. Stick it in the microwave, melt that down, mix it together, and then just coat your banana with it. This is after it's already frozen. Yeah, it, it freezes okay. a little. Actually, it just gets really cold. It doesn't freeze solidly in a half hour. Right. Coat your banana with it. Use a spoon to coat the whole thing. Roll it in some nuts. Mm. Ooh, Ooh, good treat, that's huh? Nice. And these are just regular um, you know, planters, whatever. Oh, whatever kinds of nuts you like. Ooh. Whoops. Mm, looks good. And just give it right to the children. Uh, you know, it it'll take you approximately two and a half years to clean them up after this. And, uh, you know, keep them busy. You know, they come home in the afternoon, what are you going to do, you know? So try this one out. Oh, these are good. Uh, then you put it in the freezer. You freeze them for at least an hour, and they can stay in the freezer for up to a month. They come out looking like sure. this. Yeah, right, likely, right. huh? Well, these actually look kind of good. They do look good. These are the ones I made, and I just mm -hmm. do have to warn you about one thing. Don't what? place them too close together in the freezer because they do stick together like mm. this. Hey, these yeah. are nice. These are You really like them? I love them. They're okay. very good. It's the frozen bananas. Tasty, and nice chocolate. One out of three is not bad, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, these are good tips, and try them out. You will have a good time. We want to thank the people at Cub Foods and also Litton Microwave for sharing their microwave with us. Yes, sir, and we'd like to thank any member of our audience who's willing to eat any of these things. <laughs> thank you very much. We'll be right back. Here at the Silas Thorndike Academy, our boys display exemplary behavior. Occasionally, we do have an outbreak of uh, high spiritedness. When these little mishaps occur, we rely on brawny. It's new. Brawny! It's the largest towel you can buy. And it's strong enough to handle even the toughest jobs. Thanks ever so much, brawny. Anytime, Teach. <laughs> new brawny, the big tough towel. Do men make passes at women who wear glasses? You bet they do. If the women know where to shop, dueling optical, their style, 
and selection. Designer frames to contact lenses. Professional consultants who care and affordability. With eyeglass purchase, receive a free pair of eyeglasses or daily wear contact lenses. So remember, buy your eyewear at Dueling and never, no, never answer the phone on the first ring. There's only one of these in the whole world. And you gave it to me. Uh -huh. Whoa, what a crunch. That's unreal. It's not unreal. It's all natural. You said there was only one of these. I meant that one of a kind nutty taste. Hmm. I was going to say nutty taste. Mm -hmm. What are these? Grape nuts. I was going to say grape nuts. You were going to say grape nuts. I was going to say grape nuts. <laughs> Post grape nut cereal. The one and only. He was going to say grape nuts. My daughter left a lipstick in her pocket, and before I noticed, I washed it, and it went through all our clothes. What a mess. So I grabbed Liquid Tide. Compared to another leading liquid, Liquid Tide gets out lots of tough stains, even lipstick. Not one mark of lipstick remained. Thanks. Mrs. Judy Davis. It's tough to beat Tide for getting out tough stains like this. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide. Well, the hunting show is taking place at the St. Paul Civic Center, and Gary is going to show us some highlights. It's now through Sunday. What'd you find now, Gary? Well, uh, what we found out here are a lot of kind of fun things here at, uh, at the St. Paul Civic Center, the Northwest Hunting Show, just looking at some of these bows and arrows and stuff. You know, and I'm really not um, a hunting guy or, or an outdoors guy that much. I should get more with it because Minnesota's got such great uh, natural resources in that area. But one thing I noticed, I kind of liked right away, now, they, they camouflage everything for hunters. And here are some kind of camouflage, Camo shoes. camouflage tennis shoes, which I think are kind of neat. They're Velcro, uh, Velcro guys here. But, you know, I like to go out and walk and run in the, in the, when it's maybe not such nice weather. And I always feel bad about getting my, you know, new white tennis shoes, or even after they're not so new, that, you know, how they get sloppy and muddy. Well, these, uh, you could uh, go out in any kind of weather and not feel bad about that. And they're, they're real comfortable. I had a chance to try them on. They got the, the Vibram sole kind of a waffle pattern here. So uh, kind of a neat deal. And, and uh you don't have to be a hunter, I guess, is what I'm trying to say to appreciate this show. There's, there's a lot to see here. In fact, we were here last night on the opening night. Let's take a look at some videotape right now and show you well, more of an overview of what we found. Now, this will give you just some idea of how big this year's Northwest Hunting Show really is, as it has grown in size by more than 50% over last year's show. And as such, this five-day extravaganza at the St. Paul Civic Center is considered to be the largest Twin Cities show devoted exclusively to the hunting enthusiast. And as we saw by the crowd here last night, there are lots of folks in this area who are definitely hunting enthusiasts. Now, in time for the opening of the 1987 hunting season, the show serves as a showcase for all that's new in hunting large and small game, waterfowl, and other game birds. At the show, there are over 300 exhibitors on hand to display, demonstrate, and of course, they hope, perhaps, even to sell all sorts of hunting and related outdoor items. Now, always a big attraction at the show are the various experts who give lectures and demonstrations on their particular specialties. There's always a lot to be learned at these seminars. They quack, mallard ducks quack, surprise, huh? Now also featured are scores of hunting lodges and resorts from throughout the United States and Canada. So whether you're interested in a hunting trip to a place close by or to a destination much further away, well, you'll find representatives at the show to help you make your choice. Yes, there's a lot to choose from from those who come to the show. And last night we talked to some of the folks in attendance. Oh, I like to come and look for guns and stuff and different weapons. I was going to check out uh, some seminars look at uh, the wild game around here, see if I find any good hunting clothes. I'm going to get a gun. A uh, browning. Yeah. I like all the um, different displays, uh, the new things that are out, and uh, the taxidermy display. Well, once again, just a brief overview of the 1987 Northwest Hunting Show at the St. Paul Civic Center. <laughs> well, that's right. There is just a bit of an overview of what you can see if you come down here. And I'm standing now next to Phyllis Rose, who is from Prior Lake, she's a, a local woman, but she is a fashion designer who has designed women's outdoor hunting fashion. That's correct, Gary. Okay, we've got some of your models here. I suggest let's just get right to it and uh, tell us what we have and, and what the idea is. Okay, here's Terry. She is wearing our bib overalls and jacket, all-weather jacket, and that is in a winter camouflage. Lots of pockets, very stylish. 
and can go anywhere. This goes on the slopes and it also goes out for winter hunting. Okay, that's great. Uh, it looks to me like uh, in, in what we're seeing here is that they are uh, functional as well as uh, fashionable. fashionable. That's yeah. right. That is the whole idea behind getting the gals outfitted so they've got things that'll fit them for everything they want to do. And now what's this? This is Helen. She's wearing our two-piece uh, leggings with the drawstring and our pullover jacket with the uh, monk's hood. Okay, so that's actually a two-piece unit there. That's two pieces, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. We do this in a number of different colors and styles. Okay, and, and next up. And here's Debbie. She is wearing our blaze orange uh, uh, shooting jacket and uh, brown bibs. The adjustable waistbands, of course, are all uh, pull ties. They can be worn under or over other things. Now, do you, you don't really have to guess to be a hunter or to be in the outdoors Definite, to wear these. Definitely not. No, we do these in corduroy. We do them in all fabrics, denim, everything. So that it's a concept. It's a concept that's working okay. uh, in the field and anywhere Good. one wants to get the hunting outfit. Now, that line is here at the show. Uh, Phyllis' line is called Lady Huntress, and she's about to come out with a Lord Hunter line. That's right. And we have one thing here. I'm going to just kind of step over here. Yeah, go, go ahead. And you kind of help me out here. This is the, uh, the one piece. Now, the things you were looking at there were kind of two-piece outfit kind of things with bibs and... Up leg first, Jerry. Come on. Okay, there's that one. Here we go. I oh. love dressing oh. you guys. Ah, jeez. But now, what's nice about this is, as you can see, I'm putting it on over my clothes, and that's, that's uh, reality. I mean, in other words, these are, this particular one is designed so that you can uh, put it on right over your street clothes and go about your business and, uh, and have it like that. Now, there's got one other feature I've got to show you. Okay, you got the, the, the drawstring around the, um, oops, get my mic out here. You kind of tie it like this, that's kind of nice. But what is really nice is if you undo the drawstring in the back, then it's moonlighting. Oh. <laughs> I mean, because <laughs> it has to be functional, right, as well as stylish, right? Absolutely. <laughs> the whole idea. Functional at all times out in the woods. Uh, um, the next time you go camping, uh, Sharon, if you don't have the Winnebago and the yeah, well, you, just something to keep something to keep in mind. I'm so glad somebody <laughs> thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, once again, just some of the things you can see at the Northwest Hunting Show uh, currently going on at the St. Paul Civic Center, and uh, a lot of good stuff. We're gonna have more good stuff on Good Company right after this. But before we do that, we have some super bargains. spiky bangs or gelled up hair. That just would never be me. Trendy looks come and go, but what you want is clean hair. Ivory clean. Oh, I've used a lot of shampoos that I get a really heavy build up with them. And I, I did not feel that when I used ivory. Ivory cleans gently without a lot of extra stuff that builds up. Ivory shampoo and conditioner means clean, shiny, natural hair. The ivory difference? Naturally clean hair without heavy build up. A double chocolatey treat you bake right at home with Nestle Toll House morsels. Yeah, you know how them mud bars are, like a troll house cooking in a chocolate bar. Mud bar. So, what you 
doing tonight, May? Mud bars. Making mud bars. Make them with Nestle Toll House Morsel. Mud bars. Adoption used to be such a secretive thing. There is something new going on called openness in adoption. Let me introduce you to some people who have been through this new policy. First of all, Barbara Bloomer is seated next to me. Barbara gave birth three years ago to a baby boy, and she gave him up for adoption. Next to Barbara are John and Susan Nord. Just so uh, about 11 months ago, they adopted a baby boy. Now, what's unusual about the situations that these three people have been through is that all of them were involved in meeting the birth parents or the adoptive parents. There was a meeting between them before the actual adoption took place. Why they decided to do that and what the result was, we're about to find out from all of them. Welcome. Thank you. Barbara, let's start with you. I know this was practically unheard of when you mm -hmm. suggested it, and you initiated actually meeting the parents that were going to adopt your, your uh, son. Mm -hmm. Why did you want to do that? Um, I guess the first thing was curiosity. Yeah. Um, and also, I was, it made it feel more realistic for me to meet them. Um, to meet the adoptive parents, the, a lot of people um, through openness and adoption before, you know, would meet with, well, with letters or pictures or so mm -hmm. forth, and you hear about the people. But um, meeting them face to face, I guess, was an idea for me um, to like you said, make it more realistic to me and to get a chance to get a feel for what these people were like so I could picture my son with people, yeah. not just as a picture. What was the meeting like? Oh, <laughs> that was, it was really scary, but it was also very exciting. Um, they had, the adoptive parents had their, their also adopted daughter with them. Mm -hmm. So it was really exciting for me to see her interact with them. Mm -hmm. And um, we asked, you know, questions about... Um, one question that she had asked me uh, was about um, what I, what kind of things that, what expectations I might have for my son. And, you know, I was telling her that I really didn't have any expectations of him other than, you know, for him to be the best that he could be. And um, then I asked her what expectations she had for her son, and they were about the same, so that was very exciting. That's nice to know, yeah. Mm -hmm. That must have been a relief for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was a really exciting time. John and Susan, you agreed to do this before mm -hmm. you adopted your son. Mm -hmm. What was the meeting like for you with his birth mother? Oh, it was, it was a wonderfully rich experience. First of all, to just lay eyes on the people that gave him birth was just so emotional. Yeah. We just um, all got together in that room, and I think the first thing we did was just drank it all in, just uh, um, looking at one another and um, shedding tears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, um, got to know a little bit about about them. We met both birth parents, the birth mother and the birth father, and learned a lot of things that you don't learn in on paper when you get information about their height and hair color and eye color. Mm -hmm. Things about their feelings and their ideas. And So you were glad you did it? Absolutely. Yes? Absolutely. Weren't you afraid going into it that Ooh, I'm not going to like them. They're not going to like me. Um, she's going to decide she doesn't want to give up the boy. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of fears? Part of it for us, anyway, is having the uh, agency as an interaction media uh, eliminated a lot of those fears. So uh, looking back at it, there actually is more apprehension, I think, that we would have had and carried with us through years without the experience. And mm -hmm. with the adoption being such a, a life-changing thing, uh, it only seemed natural and more natural as we reflect on it, to be able to physically meet the birth parents and acknowledge uh, with a loving meeting, uh, an emotional meeting, uh, the feelings that we've both had. And after all, there are feelings that really will be the only presence of the birth parents that we'll be able to carry with Robbie mm -hmm. for his uh, 18 years. This is the only time you will all meet in that way. You'll mm -hmm. meet the birth parents and you met the, the adoptive parents, the only time. Is that correct? Well, um, when I had met with the uh, birth, the adoptive parents, um, we had discussed um, further meetings, you know, mm -hmm. what we both felt about them. And so, you know, there's a possibility if we both, you know, we keep in contact through letters about once a year. And if, you know, both of us or all of us decide that, that we would like to meet again, there's a possibility of doing that. Do you think this is the best thing for the child that you did this? Mm -hmm. so. We do. Mm -hmm. We feel that we have first-hand 
information to share with Robbie yeah. when he wants to, to know about his roots. It, it takes the mystery out of it. Uh, of what were they like? What did yeah. they seem like? And to be able to let him know in the years to come as he can handle it, how loved he was and what a loving experience that uh, he was introduced and brought to us and that was very, very special. Yeah. Well, it is something new that's happening in adoption. If you would like some more information, Children's Home Society is involved in the program, and I know that that's where all of you mm -hmm. work through, and we want to thank them for allowing you to be with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Hi, I'm Mr. Wallpaperman of Lieberman Interiors with a tip on wall coverings. If you're looking for the largest selection of today's most popular wall coverings, come to Lieberman Interiors, where any wallpaper we stock is never more than $5.99 a roll. And if you've already found that favorite pattern, we'll order it for you today at up to 33% off the book price. And we'll help you with your decorating so you can get the job done right. We have two stores to serve you, St. Louis Park and Richfield. Nice going, Mustang. Relax and have one on me. Roger, Den Mother. Great. Trouble with your refreshment system? A negative. Where is he? Hi, boys. Diet Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. What's better than a sofa and love seat for $5.99? A sofa and love seat, two tables, and a lamp for $5.99. All total, that's a 50% savings. Where else but Slumberland can you get this coordinated designer look for so little? Right now, when you buy this handsome two-piece group with matching pillows, you'll get two brass and glass tables and a lamp with brass accents. Absolutely free. But wait, need some room for those unexpected guests? For just $100 more, you can have the sleep sofa. Come to Slumberland. There's no better deal anywhere. Beauty is only skin deep? Aha! Don't you believe it? They went all the way to make me look young again. And Quite can do the same for your carpets. They deep clean with jet steam, and your carpets look young again. Remember, Quite cleans with a Q, and that stands for quality carpet cleaning. And now, save 25% during the sale. Phone Quite, and your carpets can look young again. Aha! You know, when disaster strikes a neighborhood, it also creates an opportunity for people to really come together and support each other. Here's our Mike Brunswick with a story of a neighborhood here in Minnesota. Sometimes, even the peace of the country is disrupted by the demons of fate. On July 27, 1987, fate pointed its finger at Renard and Marianne Rother's farm near Red Wing, and a devastating tornado followed its orders. It forced its way in on the unsuspecting farm and crushed it. The Rother's pickup was lifted off the ground and thrown against the house. It went completely around the house. It was sitting over here by the garage. And it went around the house and hit the windows on the south and then kept going around again and landed up on the other side of where the garage used to be. That garage disappeared and was never found. It took only minutes to destroy what the Rothers had taken 35 years to build and cultivate. its way across the open land to a neighboring farm, John and Shirley Furlong's place. There, it blew away barns and cattle, crushed pickup trucks and farm equipment, ripped off the roof of the house, and mutilated its insides. Steve Furlong's brothers and children were in the basement when it happened. By the time he pulled into the driveway, it was over. As seen, I'll never forget pulling that driveway seeing the house and seeing the sun going down because you can't see it from the driveway you got the barn there but the barn was gone and seeing that sun and hearing all that helicopter noise i'll never i'll never forget that sight there i'll always stick in the restless wind had already escaped 
to a devil's hideaway. Then the quiet returned, but a new kind of quiet. There was something unsettling about the peace here now. They all muttered aloud, thank God no one was hurt. <laughs> Within hours, two to three hundred neighbors showed up to clean up, to give hugs, to offer food. We've done stories about inner city neighborhoods, suburban neighborhoods. Well, this is a rural neighborhood. I mean, just because your neighbor is a mile away doesn't mean that this isn't a real neighborhood in every sense of the word. They walked hills and picked up debris. They moved hay and straw. They moved cattle. There were some cows trapped under the barn. There was an old red barn that had a hay barn that was full of hay and straw. They moved all that and just everything picked up. My house was full of glass. Ladies came with a shop back and vacuumed that all up. How will you ever repay them? I don't know. <laughs> if they all, they all have any trouble, I'm sure I'll be there to help. That's the way a good neighborhood operates. That's true. <laughs> a good neighborhood with good neighbors, like Marion Jenke, who not only took over Shirley Furlong's Kids and Moms clothing store in Red Wing, but helped put a smile back on Shirley's face. I think everybody kind of works by in see what needs to be done and go ahead and, and do it. Cheryl Smith from the Red Wing radio station, KCUE, organized a fundraiser to help pay for losses not covered by insurance. And she found that people from the community were knocking down her door to donate prizes, food, entertainment, everything. I'm relatively new to the area. We'd only been in the neighborhood two weeks when the tornado hit. It's a way of meeting great people, I'll tell you that. You know, you're really not alone out here, even though it seems that way. Yeah, no, you have a lot of friends, and your neighbors are terrific. They're just part of your life out here. It tells you, in a world where you, when you turn on the news and things are really bad, that there are really good people around, yeah. I, moving out to this neighborhood, I found some fantastic people, and uh, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. It's not like town where you don't know your neighbors next door. Here you know everyone. Sometimes, Neighbors separated by distance are the closest of all. My wife, I love her. I hate her. She can eat anything and not gain a pound. Now she started drinking my Diet 7-Up because it tastes so great. I always knew it tasted great. What if everyone finds out? People who can drink anything will drink all the Diet 7-Up. Is that fair? There'll be shortages, rationing. Want some ice cream, honey? No, thanks, dear. I hate her. Diet 7-Up. Jenny, your pancakes are ready. I didn't know you made pancakes, Mrs. Butterworth. Just taste how light and fluffy they are. Mmm, I can't wait. But I forgot a fork. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mrs. Butterworth. My two syrups are delicious. Because they're both made with grade A butter. She really talks. And they pour on very thick and rich. Mrs. Butterworth's regular and light. What does the spell bounce remind me of? Spring. Here at the lake when everything is new. And every morning I come out and I ride my bike around the lake. And I all the smells. It's just natural. It just smells so fresh. Here. Outdoor fresh bounce. Sounds great, doesn't it? Jump in! Bolt is so strong and so sturdy that in tests, it actually stood up to a washing machine. Here's Scott Towels. Here's Bounty. And here's Bolt. Bolt. The super strong and sturdy paper towel. Northern Bathroom Tissue has a special kind of softness because it's quilted. And you can feel the difference quilting makes. Northern, quilted for a special kind of softness. Good afternoon, I'm Angela, a store with an eyewitness news brief. The Pope has made it. Pope John Paul has begun his pilgrimage in the United States. We'll keep track of him and have your reaction to his visit on Live at Five. 
On the health scene, Dr. Michael Breen shows us a new fetal test that can actually save the life of an unborn baby. And for folks who can't stomach flying, the good doctor will have some tips to ease your flight. And on Family Matters, Lindsay Strand reports on a new daycare center for moms and dads who work downtown. Join us at 5. Roseville Bicentennial Celebration coming up. Betty Wolfangles here. We would like to invite your TV audience to come to Rosedale Shopping Center in Roseville on this Saturday night from 6.30 to 9 p.m. to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the U.S. Constitution. Ruth Spencer from KSTP TV News will be our mistress of ceremonies. Benjamin Franklin will be there and Senator Rudy Bashwitz. It's free. Benjamin Franklin? Right. In person. It's free. Children from toddler to 12 can participate in the patriotic costume parade and receive a prize. Right, we're out of time, but there's a number, 483-5582. Good luck on it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And tomorrow, the Parade of Homes preview. Thank you for joining us. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. For years, I've tried to diet my way back into this size 10 dress, but diets have no flavor, so I cheated. Well, with Nutrisystem, it's going to be different. Hey, getting there. On the Nutrisystem Flavor Set Point Weight Loss Program, I eat foods rich in flavor and texture, so I never have to cheat. Success! I lost 35 pounds. I'm a 10 again. Call now and receive 50% off the cost of Nutrisystem services. We succeed where diets fail you. Mark Zapelsa and Angela Astor, only on Minnesota's News Channel.